submitting to the iOS App Store. This is a lot more in depth than the Android method. So what you have to do here is we have to generate a distribution certificate, create a, an app ID for your app, create a provisioning profile and sign the app. Then you have to use iTunes Connect uh, to submit the app uh, to the App Store. So the first one we're going to deal with is generating the distribution certificate. So first you'll want to make sure you're logged into your pay for app of our Apple developer account. So you can go to that at developer.apple.com. Then you want to go to the certificate section. And this should load up uh, the specific screen here. Then within the certificate section you want to go to production. So this time it's not a development certificate, it's going to be a production certificate. You want to select the little plus icon here. And what type of certificate do we need? Because we're deploying to the App Store, we want to select App Store and Ad Hoc. Click Continue. And now we want to create a certificate signing request, and this is required for creating our certificate. So to do that, we're going to use the, the inbuilt Mac tool called uh, Keychain. And we can just open that just now. So we'll navigate up here, type Keychain. And this brings up this window here, and from here you can see everything, all, all the uh, kind of keys and private files of your uh, Mac system. I want to select my certificates, and these are all the certificates that are already pre-installed in my Mac. What you want to do is select a blank space, and then navigate to Keychain Access, Certificate Assistant, Certificate Assistant, and request a certificate. This brings up this window where you just enter. Uh, specific information. So for user email address, I'm just going to put my email address, common name, which is just my name, and then from the section, uh, the CA email address, you can just leave that blank, because we're not going to be emailing it to a CA. We just want to be saving it to disk. And then we can hit continue, and it'll allow you to save that to your desktop, because we'll be needing this in the next step of the Apple developer portal. Just call this something more unique and hit save. Now if we navigate back to the Apple developer portal, we want to hit continue and then we want to upload the CSR file that we just generated. So to do that we just like choose file and I see that on my desktop. So we just open that and then the next thing we want to do is select generate. Now that that's generated, we'll want to download it. All we need to do is select download. And I'll just drag this to my desktop to make it easier to find. So now, when I double click this file, it should install the certificate. And we should be prepared for the next step in deploying to the iOS store. And there we can see it. The next thing we need to do is create an app ID for an app. This is a unique identifier required by Apple to identify your app. And we'll be able to do this again via the Apple Developer Portal. So to do this, all we need to do is navigate to the App ID section here of the Developer Portal. And we can see here that all the apps we've created previously. As we're creating a new app, we just want to hit the plus sign. And this brings up the screen to register a new app. So the app ID description is Sheep Herder. And we'll just call it 2 as we've already got Sheep Herder in the store. We can just use this for demonstration purposes. We can just leave the app ID prefix as default. And for the bundle ID, we want to make it the same as the ID in the standalone application sense from previously. So we can get that just from the standalone application settings. So we'll go to the iOS and there it is there. It's com.livecode.sheepherder. Paste that in there. So this will just ensure that all app purchases and everything related to your app is can be found within that unique ID. And we can just have some app services enabled or disabled as we like here. Hit continue. And that's our app ID created. All we need to do now is hit submit. And that should be us. 
and just hit done and we should be able to see our app ID within the list provided. And there it is. Now we want to move on to the final stage which is creating the provisioning profile for distributing your app and signing the application. So to do this, if we navigate to our developer uh, account again and then select provisioning profiles. These are all the provisioning profiles we've already have set up. So we want to see our distribution ones. And these are the ones we already have set up. We want to create a new one. So all we need to do is select the little plus icon. We want to distribute to the app store. So select that and select continue. Now in this section here we can select the uh, app ID that we created previously and select continue. And now we want to select the appropriate certificate that we created in the first step. So I have three here, but that was just for test purposes. So the third one is the one I want to select. And now we can give this profile a name. And this is a profile that will be viewable within live code. So it's good to give it something uh, unique here. So sheep here the two profile. Once we have that, all we need to do is hit generate. And there it is, it's ready to download. So if we download this, and then open it, it should open up the Xcode organizer in the provision profile section, and we can see that it's installed the profile here and it's valid. So now that it's here, we should be able to use it within live code. First, we need to reset live code, so if we do that first, open up live code. Open up our sheet parallel stack, go to iOS, and from the profile list we should see sheet parallel 2 profile. Now if we close that, we'll file, save a standalone application, select the desktop again, and we should now be able to build a fully code signed iOS app. It'll ask for access to the keychain and standalone application successfully built. We can now upload this to the iOS App Store. And now we're on to the final section of submitting your app to the App Store. And to do this, we're going to use a service called iTunes Connect and the Application Loader. So first we need to uh, navigate to the iTunes Connect website. And then you can log in with your Apple Developer Account details. From in here, you'll be able to manage all of your apps in the App Store and see any other relevant information about them. You can see here we have a sheep herder game in the app store already and we have Galactic Gauntlet as well. What I want to do here is add a new app and it's going to be an iOS app. I want to name the app Sheep Herder 2 and the SQU number is just a unique identifier for the app. So we can just use uh, the internal app ID that we used previously, so com.livecode.sheepherder. Hit continue. When do you want this app to be available? So we can just select any applicable dates here for your app. And I'm just going to make it in the 17th of October so the app doesn't go live because this is uh, just a, a clone of the Sheep Herder app that's already on there. You can set the price to free as well. And in here we want to put specific options here. So version number, it's just going to be the first version. So copyright to us, run rev. And we're just going to select some categories, so in here we'll just put games and arcade and arcade should be fine. And the secondary category, don't need to put anything. And for ratings, you shouldn't need to put anything because there's no violence or graphic content of any awful nature within our app, so just set that all to none. And then here we can just put specific uh, information regarding the app. So description, I'm just going to uh, put what we put in for the Android store in here. So here are as many sheep before the time runs out. And 
here we're just going to put some keywords related to the app. So sheep, herder, fun, uh, live code. These are just some ideas of keywords that I'm using for this app, but every app will be different and different keywords will suit different apps. Support URL, just going to put runrev.com and I just leave the next two blank. Contact information. Uh, that can, that's just your general contact information, but I'm just going to put run and rev in here and new at runrev.com is the email address. And we need to put in a phone number here, so I can just get that from the runrev website. I just paste it in there. Don't need any review notes, no demo accounts needed. And now we're just going to upload some assets uh, to uh, kind of show off our application. So we should already have these preset, so we can have large app icons, some screenshots. I'm just going to use the splash screens that we had from previously. There's one for the iPad, uh, so there's one for the iPhone original, uh, iPhone Retina. iPad and once these are uploaded we should be able to continue don't need anything for the app coverage file that should be fine so next we can hit save this will take us to the next screen and that's everything pretty much set up so we can see here we've got our prepare for upload button so now we'll need to use a separate application called Application Loader to upload our uh, standalone to the App Store. So we go back to the details and we can see a button here called Ready to Upload Binary. This is just a little disclaimer here. We just hit No and hit Save and Continue. So now it's changed for Waiting for Upload. And as I've stated, we need to use the application loader to upload this file. Before we can do that, we need to compress uh, the standalone app before it's recognised by the application loader. Open up the application loader. This comes pre-installed with Xcode. Select the application from this drop-down list. Then select Choose. And then we can choose the zip file we just created. And then we hit Send and it will go through the process of uploading it to the iTunes Connect site. This is uploaded. You might see some warnings, but these can be ignored. Hit Next and Done. And now if we go back to the iTunes Connect site and refresh the page, you can see that it now states waiting for review. This just means that that's been successfully uploaded and it's now in the hands of Apple to review and put it in the iOS store.